Damn you, Mom and Dad. This is all your fault. Does VR suck for you? Are you using your Quest 2 or your Quest 3 or even the Apple Vision Pro and you're just getting frustrated that you feel discomfort, uncomfortable in the headset and sometimes you just want to rip the thing off your face and say, enough? <coughs> well, I hate to break the news to you, but it is not VR's fault. It's your body's fault. It, it's your fault. You know what? It's not even your fault. It's your parents' fault because they gave birth to you and it's their genes and their DNA that made your body that hates VR so much. Actually, you know what? We should stop there. This is not about body shaming at all. Your body is just fine. And today we're gonna devote this video to why VR sucks because of your body, but how you can take charge and make it work for you. Now, first of all, you might be wondering, hey, is it even worth it to go through all of this in order to get virtual reality to work? Well, the answer is yes, it is well worth it because VR, virtual reality, spatial computing, whatever we're going to call it today, tomorrow or in the future, it is well worth it because the levels of immersion, the levels of detail, the levels of interaction with your environment and with your programs, games and apps is so superior to anything that you can get any other way today that it is worth figuring out how to make it work for you. So let's dive into how anybody can use VR comfortably. See what I did there? Anybody? 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 It's kind of a dad joke. You know, I'm not a dad. Can I legally use dad jokes? Probably not. I'm going to get sued. <laughs> And to anyone with any physical challenges, such as being in wheelchairs or people with hearing challenges and such, VR possesses its own unique challenges, but may also open up a world of wonder to you as well. So let's talk about the things that contribute to your body not necessarily liking virtual reality or feeling comfortable and how we can overcome them. Number one is the shape of your face. With a computer screen, it doesn't matter what shape someone's face is. Everyone utilizes a computer monitor the same way. You're looking at it from a distance. It's flat. It's rectangular. It's very simple. But with virtual reality, you're attaching this thing to your face and everyone has a unique face shape and that can make the virtual reality experience very different, either uncomfortable or comfortable, depending on what you're putting on your face. So how can we combat that? Well, usually just by making absolutely sure that the uh, back strap and everything is tightened right, that if there's a strap on the top of the headset that you're getting it set just right so that it is fitting on your face as good as possible, that will take care of it an awful lot of the time. In addition to that, making sure that the face gasket that is attaching to your face is comfortable. Sometimes you may need to invest a little bit of more money in a different face gasket or, or face cushion that maybe has a little bit more cushion to it or sometimes is a little bit more firm that will actually work a little bit better with the shape of your face. The next thing are your eyes themselves which come into a couple of different factors here. First of all, is if you need a prescription, if you wear prescription glasses or contacts, this is really huge. Well, then when you're in the virtual reality headset, make sure that if you can, you're wearing your glasses inside the headset or contact lenses if you wear them. Or you can go one step further, which is what I've chosen to do. I love this very much, and that is getting prescription lens inserts that are made specifically for your headset and will fit right on there nice and neatly. These will usually cost you between $50 and $100, roughly in there, depending on what company you use and so forth. The pair that I'm using right now in my Quest 3, I believe I got those from Zenny. They were right around $50 or $60 and worth every penny. But you want to make sure that you can see clearly, that you're seeing things as clearly as possible. So don't take your glasses off if you wear a prescription. Put them in there. But make absolutely sure that they're not touching the lenses of your VR headset because that can scratch them and your glasses. And those lenses should be protected at all costs. That's another reason I love the prescription inserts. In addition to that with our eyes is what we call our IPD, the interpupillary distance. And that is the distance between the pupils of your eyes. Now, this becomes really important in virtual reality because the lenses in the VR headset can move slightly left and right, independent of each other, and try, so that you're looking at the clearest spot in the lenses at all times. 
Well, you want to make sure that you get that IPD setting, that interpupillary distance setting set correctly in your VR headset. If you're using a Quest 2, you have to take that set off and you just kind of push the lenses together or pull them apart a little bit. There's usually, I think, three different settings and sometimes you can even put it in between them. If you're using a Quest 3, there's a little slider on the bottom that you can use that'll move them a little bit. So just take a moment. It'll only take you about 20 or 30 seconds to play with that a little bit and make sure that your IPD is dialed in so that you're seeing the most crystal clear image you can by looking through the sweet spot on those lenses. The next thing that you can blame your body for and blame your parents for for making that body for you is motion sickness. Now, this is a huge one. We talk about this a lot in virtual reality. Are the causes of motion sickness and how we can overcome them or what we sometimes call VR sickness or getting your VR legs by getting over that motion sickness by taking a little bit of time making sure you're doing things as right as possible and easing yourself into it. So there are a few things that factor into motion sickness when it comes to using virtual reality. Number one is to remember that everybody is different. Before, after, before, <laughs> after, before, after. To remember every person is different. Some people can go out on boats on the water and never get seasick. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> Other people will go out there and as soon as that boat starts rocking just a little bit, they're puking over the side and feeding the fish. Well, the fish love it, but you don't love it when you're on the boat and experiencing that in your own body. Oh, am I seasick? <laughs> Tony, mind over matter. <laughs> That's all. Hey, look what I got. Raw liver. Have a mm. bite. <laughs> So the first thing that I always recommend is getting into experiences that will ease you into virtual reality. Remember, you're putting something on your face. You're fooling your brain into thinking that what it's seeing is real. When you're looking on a computer screen, you don't get that because it's like you're looking through a window. Your brain is perceiving all the stuff around you in the room and it's using that as a basis for reference. But when you put this headset on, now your brain is thinking, hey, everything I'm seeing is moving when I turn my head or when my character is moving because I use the stick on my controller, I don't feel my body moving, but my brain is telling me I'm moving because everything around me looks like I should be. There's a disconnect that happens there and it's what causes us to feel a little bit ill. Oh, Jesus Christ. I was just about so I always recommend that first and foremost, you start with programs or game experiences or things like that where your character is not moving, where you are stationary and the only movement that happens is when you turn your head, you know, or when you turn your body in the real space. Well, then what your eyes are seeing and what your brain is perceiving and what your body is feeling are incongruency. So you're much less likely to feel motion sick at that point. So keep it to simple virtual reality things or start with some augmented reality experiences where you're using the pass through. If you're using a Quest 2 or a Quest 3 or an Apple Vision Pro or even a, a Pico headset, right? That has the cameras that will show you your real world. Start with experiences that are bringing some aspects of virtual reality into your own experience. That will help you get over it very quickly. Also commit to doing little things in VR every day. If you feel discomfort the first time you go into VR, don't try to push through it. Push it, good. Push it. Just stop. Have a time. Take a break, you know, and just get yourself into the habit of doing a little bit. 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day in virtual reality, your body will start to get used to it. And before you know it, you can be in virtual reality for hours and have no motion sickness at all. You have to build up the tolerance. Just like anything else, your body will adapt. Your brain will adapt. You will get used to this and it will become something that you can do on a much regular basis. Myself now, I don't get VR sick doing anything. I can fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator and do barrel rolls all day long and I won't get, well, okay, if I did it all day long, I'd probably get sick, but then anybody would. I'd be worried about myself if I didn't. I'd probably be an alien. Of course. I am a citizen of this planet. All right, but you can get over this. Again, your body does not have to limit you. And remember, like I said, this sounds like a lot of work. This sounds like a pain. I mean, why should I have to get over something that's making me feel queasy? It's going to be worth it. It's such an incredible experience. It doesn't mean you don't have to love doing things on your computer and playing regular flat screen games or mobile games as well. But once you do this and really get into it, it is a life changing experience. Oh, oh. Oh, oh God.
I'll have what she's having. The next thing is getting hot in the headset because you're wearing this thing on your face. It's bottling more heat in. Plus the thing that you're wearing gets a little warm sometimes. Usually they're pretty good about keeping that heat away from your face, but you do tend, some people more than others, get a little warm when you're wearing the headset. So a couple of things to do there that can help you is some headsets allow you to get a little fan that you can attach that will suck air out of the headset a little bit, you know, in front of your face or blow a little bit in, and that can help to keep you cool a little bit. But that's another thing where keep the environment that you're playing in a little bit cooler, dress a little bit cooler so that you're not holding in heat, and then just practicing again, you'll get a little bit more used to it. The first couple of times we wear something on our head, it's not natural. What the hell is that? All right, but you do get used to it, just like a football player wearing a football helmet when they play the games. First few times, it is just nothing but limiting and discomfort and limited field of view and all of these things. But the more they play, the more they get used to it. It's going to be the same thing with a virtual reality headset. What you do that for? And one of the final things here is feeling like you look stupid. All right, look. You're wearing a virtual reality headset on your head. You're gonna look stupid, okay? That's all right, because most of the time, if you're doing this the right way, you're probably playing in the comfort of your home. You know, you're probably playing in your basement. It's probably just you. Who cares what you look like? Tic Tac, sir? <laughs> It's what you're seeing in the headset. It's what you're experiencing that matters. So the first thing I'll say is just get over the fact that you might look a little stupid. That's okay. Now the headsets are looking cooler and cooler all the time. The Apple Vision Pro looks kind of cool, sort of. It's still big. Eventually, we're going to get the smaller and smaller ones, and maybe eventually they'll be the size of, of glasses, although I, I, I'm not sure that will be the best experience because of decreased field of view and all these other things. So just get over the fact that you might feel like you look stupid. It doesn't matter. Okay, we do a lot of things in our lives that we probably look stupid doing, but we enjoy doing it. I'm not a great dancer, but I love going out and dancing. And when I'm out on that dance floor, I might look a little stupid when I'm doing it, but I'm having a great time. And that's what counts. Okay, so those are the main reasons that your body is at fault if VR isn't working for you, if VR is not comfortable. You have your body to blame, your parents to blame, but that's okay. Again, your body is an amazing thing and it has the ability to adapt, as does your mind. You just need to take a few steps just to get a little bit used to it. And before you know it, you'll develop those VR legs and you'll be in there having a great time, swashbuckling, riding horses, swinging swords, doing all, you know, solving puzzles and mysteries and getting out of escape rooms and swimming in the oceans, doing all the things that you would love to do in real life that maybe are too expensive or that you're a little afraid to do, you can do them now in virtual reality and it's the closest thing you'll have to doing the real thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If I missed anything here, please let me know in the comments or if you tried these things and they've not worked for you, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna respond to every comment that comes in and I wanna hear from you and continue this conversation. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to subscribe to it and like it, but only if you enjoyed it, okay? Don't do it just because I'm asking you to. That shouldn't matter. I mean, it'd be nice and that's wonderful. You're a nice giving person, but really just do it if you enjoyed it because I hope to keep coming out with more and more videos going forward. This is Jolly Julian signing off from the real world to get back into the virtual world because that's where I belong. I'll see you there. Buck.